Hi, and thanks for tuning in. My name is Abby Lee. I am the creator of Sploot News, and today I'm going to be walking you through my daily morning hedgehog routine. This is not a hedgehog. This is my cat. He also lives with me. Um, but I wanted to tell you a couple of quick things first. Um, so my day starts at a different time on a couple of different days in the week. Some days in the week I work very early. Apparently he wants down. So my um, day will start around 5.30 or 6 a.m. Um, now I live in the Northern Hemisphere. I live in the Southern United States. So it's obviously winter here. Um, and so when I get up at 5.30 or 6 in the morning, it's still very cold outside. Um, it's also dark. So Noodle will actually still be awake and sometimes on her wheel playing or eating, snacking, what have you at that time. So to not, um, in order to not disturb her natural behavior, you know, I don't want to mess up whatever she's doing and playing with, I'll just do um, a quick check looking on her, make sure she's okay. And then when I get back home, it'll be maybe around noon. And that's when I'll go through our morning routine. So morning is a little relative in my house, um, at least as far as like the beginning of my daily routine for noodle goes. Um, today is one of those days um, I've gotten off work, I've come home, and now it's time to do our morning routine, even though it's not quite morning. So on days when I don't work that early, my day usually gets started around 8, 8.30, sometimes as late as 9 a.m. Um, I'm trying to keep it more consistent, but on days when it starts later, it starts around 9, and we will do our morning routine then. The steps are always the same, um, more or less always the same. This is our winter routine. So things are a little bit different in the spring and summer when I can open the door, let in some fresh air, when it's not so cold outside, but for now it's really cold outside. And so this is what we do every morning. Let's get started. All right guys, good morning. As you can see, this is Noodle's cage. She has a single story ferret nation. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking the blanket off the top. Like I said, it's winter, it's cold outside. So at night I generally put a towel uh, not a towel, a blanket, that fleece blanket that you just saw. I put it over the top of her cage. Um, I usually end it around here, kind of bring it around a little bit because she has two heat lamps. She has one right here, one right here. We've done a cage tour in the past. You can watch that on our channel. Not much has changed since then. Um, so in order not to touch the um, heat lamps and create a fire hazard, I just let her blanket kind of come over here. All right, so now what we need to do is take out uneaten food and water that we haven't drank. I'm also going to take out her wheel, which has poop on it, as you can see. Basically, I'm taking out everything in her cage. Toys, she has a tube and some, uh, a ping pong ball and a crinkly doll. And I'm also going to take out this extra little fleece blanket. Um, and that's all good. We need to take out noodles. Now, this step only takes a few seconds, but it's really important. So, what I do every day, every morning, actually, <laughs> probably a couple times a day, but as part of our routine, I will take her little feet. Of course, she's not being super cooperative right now, but if I can get her into the belly. I'll just take a look at her feet and her toes. Make sure there's no poop. Make sure there's no hair wrapped around. Where's that footy? Come here, let me see it. Sometimes I might pick her up and look at her like this. Then I can see her toes. Um, and that way I make sure there's no hair, circulation isn't cut off, there's no poop, that kind of thing. Tells me, you know, how bad her poop boots are, does she need a bath, that kind of thing. Say hello. Okay, next thing. Now what I need to do is shake out her fleece, but it's very cold outside, so when I do shake out the fleece outside, I'll show you in a minute. Um, she can't go with me. I can't hold her in my hand because it's very cold. So I make a little noodle dumpling, right? And leave her right there. She usually doesn't, um, I've never seen her try to crawl off the couch when she's all wrapped up like this. I keep an eye on her. Don't just leave your hedgehog like unattended, but I do need to like put her somewhere soft and warm while I shake out her fleece. Noodle has two fleeces in her cage. Um, the reason for this is because she loves to burrow as most hedgehogs do. She does not like sleeping bags or sleepy sacks. I don't know why. I bought her several of them. Um, we have been gifted some, and she just really doesn't care for them. So we have two fleeces. One as like a bottom liner that she will sleep on top of. And then the bottom one, or I mean the top layer that she will play on top of. Going to open our door, and we're going to shake this out. 
So I just want to get off any poop, kibble crumbs, etc. There's my apartment. There's my new bird feeder. So once I've given that a good shake, back inside. Now I need to put her fleece back in. If I see any poops, which I see a little piece right there, I'm actually gonna spot just clean. grab like a tissue, piece of toilet paper, paper towel, whatever's handy. And I'll just spot clean. If there's any kibbles, any poops, anything left, um, you know, just dust, whatever it is that I wanna get out, that's how I do it. And now it's time to put Noodle's fleece back in. So it's been shaken out. This is the top layer. Put it under her t-shirt fabric forest. Under the little ladder to her loft. She doesn't go up there a whole lot, but she has the second floor if she wants to go. And now her fleece is back in. And now it's time. Deet, deet, deet. Oh, look at that face. Now it's time to put Noodle back in her house. So she'll crawl in between the fleeces. They go be good boy. Okay, maybe not. You won't let me. <laughs> she'll crawl in between these two fleece layers and sleep in between them, sort of like a noodle sandwich. Um, so that's why we have two layers of fleece so that she can comfortably do her like natural inclination of burrowing, but not have to lay on the cold hard plastic. She also does have Spinal arthritis, she has spondylosis. So two layers of fleece just also make it warmer and more comfortable for her. Put her extra little fleece back in there. I just, it doesn't really matter where I put it. Um, sometimes she'll grab it, tug it around. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, real quick, just dump in the garbage any poop that might come off the, um, wheel. the wheel. Noodle actually has two wheels. This is one of them, it's a flying saucer. Again, I like it because she has spondylosis, and so as you can see, it's a little bit flatter. It's a flat surface. She runs right here or on this part of it, so her back doesn't have to arch so much. She does have another wheel, which I will show you as part of the evening routine, um, and that one she also enjoys, so she likes them both. And now it's time to clean the um, flying saucer. This is the lazy girl's way, I guess, to clean this. I just put dish detergent on. And then I'm going to turn on some running hot water. And I'm going to let that run while I go do her other tasks. Now, like I said, I know that may not be the most environmentally friendly way. Sometimes I will stand here and scrub it. But generally, like, where she's ran on that poop and peed on top of it, it's really gross and it's, like, caked on. And this happens after one or two days, you know. So, um, this is not something that takes a week to build up. So, I do like to let it soak. I want to make sure that all this stuff gets off and that it's clean. So we're gonna let that run while we go do something else. So what I've got here are her two food bowls. This one is like a, it's a hamster bowl I got at the pet store. I'm gonna jump out the water, rinse it out. I'm also gonna take a little bit of dish detergent and put it in here, because I wanna kill germs. Um, you know, if there's any, I don't know, grease, spit, whatever it is. I just want it gone and I want it to be clean. And when that's done, I'll just set it off to the side. Now I'm gonna take her kibble and I'm gonna dump it into the garbage. And now I'm gonna repeat that same process with her food bowl. Um, I say food bowl, <laughs> this is part of a dish set that I got, but I found that it was the perfect size. She had, it's a little hot, she had a um, like red plastic food bowl, but she had a tendency to knock it over. This is heavier because it's like ceramic. Um, it's a prettier color, and it's also like a better size. Her other bowl was like deeper, so she had to stick her head further in it. So I like this bowl for her. It's a good size for her um, face. And now we're done with that, so I'll set it to her some fresh, clean, cold water. And we're gonna put that in her cage. Um, I usually just sit it somewhere over here in the corner, out of her way. I'm also gonna add her toys back in. She has a ping pong ball crinkly toy and a little tube. These are also toys for her, obviously. She loves to like grab this and yank on it. That's fine for and her. And at this point, if there's anything still left on the bowl, I'll just spray it. I mean the bowl. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, let me move that. If there's anything left on the wheel, I'll just take our sprayer and get that off. Okay. 
And if there's anything really stubborn, make sure we get all the soap off. Um, this is the time when I'll take a paper towel um, and I'll start to dry around the outside of it. Because obviously you don't want water um, to, you know, get done in the, um, you know, whatever it is. I guess it's some kind of like plastic sort of nut and bolt situation. You don't want water to get down in there, especially if you have a wheel that has wire elements to it because um, it will rust or it could rust. So while I'm drying it off, this is also the time where like, I'll focus on the poop last, you know, but I'll just go around dry in between these little ridges and then I'll just wipe off any remaining doo-doo. <laughs> um, and sometimes there is more than others, depending on how much she ran on this wheel for the night and it smells bad. Okay, so the last step is really putting her wheel back in. You know, if I need to move anything around, done and done. I keep her wheel on that side. And then I need to check her temperature, which is 77 degrees right now. I have a, um, like a fish thermometer, not fish thermometer, but you know what I mean, an analog thermometer. Um, if you have to buy a thermometer, I would recommend a digital thermometer, but when I got her cage, I just happened to have a couple of these and they work really well for me. So, all right. So that's pretty much my morning routine for noodle. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to film my evening, uh, routine for her. Again, this is our winter routine. So things that are different are, you know, in the spring and summer when it's warm outside and I'm shaking out her fleece, I might actually take her and put her down on the porch. Um, and let her run around and get some fresh air. Um, at night, you know, I'll crack open the door, I'll let some fresh air come in while she's playing. Um, in the evening, I do set up a playpen for her and sometimes I'll set that up outside of the porch. So again, this is our winter routine. Um, not much is different, but um, in the winter, of course, it's most important to make sure that you're checking temperature frequently um, because hedgehogs that get cold can go into hibernation, um, which can be deadly for them. So it's really important to protect your hedgehog and keep them safe. Hedgehogs prefer something like 72 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Every hedgehog is an individual, so everyone is different. Some may prefer 74, some may prefer 76, 77, um, some may prefer 78. So it's really important that you know your hedgehog and that you check and see what temperature they're most active at um, and that you keep them safe in that way. So Noodle is back in her cage um, and we're gonna wait until it's dark and then we'll film our evening routine. Okay. So earlier you saw me clean Noodle's food bowl. I'm not gonna go over her diet too much right now because that's the subject for another video, but we're gonna do a little mix of our kibble. We have some American Journey kibble, like so. And we have some science diet. The next thing we're gonna do is go wormy hunting. So I have Noodle's worms over here. We ate a couple of them earlier as treats, but I like to make sure that she gets several per day. So what I'm gonna do is go through and find the remaining worms. We've been on this uh, container for a few days, so there's not that many left. But essentially, I'm gonna put what worms we do have in the aquarium and let Noodle hunt them down. That might actually be it. I try to make sure that she gets a handful of worms every day or crickets or like whatever insects I have on hand. There's the remainder of the bell pepper I was feeding them. Like I said, we've had this container for a few days now, so that actually may be it. Next, next we need one Noodle. Voila. Beep, beep. And we will let her hunt the worm, or in most cases, worms, like so. Now, while she's doing that, I'm gonna work on putting together her playpen. So I actually have two playpens. This one, it came with a previous cage that she had, but um, I liked the playpen, so I kept it. I also have this playpen, and I just put them together like so. Um, 
super simple, not like technically what how they're supposed to go together, but like it works. And then I'll just add in her toys. So I have a um, little like makeshift ball pit. Um, it's the like ferret ball pit that you can buy at any pet store. A hide. I have her other wheel, which I told you guys I would show you her secondary wheel. She actually prefers this one, I think, a little bit, but she has both wheels just in case. Um, she has a preference. And then I'll throw in like a couple more toys. And now I'm gonna go get her dinner and put it in here. Um, I actually have her water on hand, so put that right there. I also usually put down a puppy pad for her, just one because I want it to go under the wheel to catch any poop or pee. But if I put down more than one, um, she will climb under it. And I don't really want that, especially since the floor can be a little cold. I would much prefer her to get in her hide or I'm gonna grab out of her cage her extra little fleece blanket. So I'd much prefer her to um, play with her or like get under her blanket or her oatmeal tube or like any of these things instead of getting under the puppy pad. Now I'm going to add her into the mix, just like so. And then what I'll do is turn off the overhead light to make her more comfortable. Most of the time I will turn on this little space heater on low. And that way she has some additional heat to make sure that she's comfortable while she is in her clicking. She's on the other side of the ball pit. So that's kind of everything for Noodle's night routine. So when I go to bed, usually maybe around 11, I'll put Noodle uh, back in her house and let her go, you know, she can play in her house, she can eat, she can take a nap. Usually she naps from like 12 to 2 a.m. Um, sometimes if she's not very active in her playpen, um, just depending on how she feels, I'll take her out and let her sit with me while I'm, you know, sitting in bed, sitting on the couch, whatever I happen to be up to. And then I didn't include this in my morning routine because it's kind of different every night. So either before I go to bed or um, during the day, when I get up in the morning, I'll put away her playpen, clean up any poop, pee, put away her toys and her food, and then vacuum the floor as well. Honestly, I vacuum that spot um, pretty much every day, at least, you know, either in the morning or at night. It kind of depends on when I'm uh, cleaning the area where her playpen is, but I do vacuum it pretty frequently for a couple of reasons because I don't want my carpet uh, or the rug that she's on to smell bad and also because I don't want there to be any like kibble crumbs or things that she could ingest or put in her mouth that I don't want her to. So I try to vacuum that every day to clean up after her and also to make sure that there's nothing dangerous that she could put in her mouth. So I think that about covers it. Um, you know, this is just a basic daily routine. If she's sick or if something special is happening, you know, sometimes we might have to do some medicine. Sometimes it might change a little bit, but this is our basic daily routine. I would say on average, I spend at least an hour a day with her between cleaning her cage, checking her health, um, giving her food and water, doing maybe some bonding time, wormy hunting. Um, you know, if I have to give her a bath or nail trimming, that obviously doesn't happen every day. It happens every couple of weeks. But um, those are still some things that contribute to our time together. So those are kind of the things that I um, that I usually do, again, about an hour a day with her, sometimes more. Just kind of depending. Sometimes we do special events. I'll take her with me somewhere and we spend a little more time together. So it just really depends. Um, but this is a basic everyday kind of day for us. So <laughs> thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always. Please remember that Split News is a monthly hedgehog newsletter. We provide care information and tips um, for myself and other experts. But remember that Split News is not a replacement um, for vet care. And no matter what you know, hedgehog information source you're looking at, it can never uh, be liable for your care choices. You know, you need to do your own research. You need to be responsible for your own hedgehog. Um, educating yourself every single day about your hog is important. Uh, and that will make you and your hedgehog happier. So keep those things in mind. Um, you know, remember that uh, vetting, vet care is important. So 
that's kind of my thoughts on the subject. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you would like to see us cover, please let me know. You can always email splunews at gmail.com. Hope you're all having a great night. I am going to stop talking now because Noodle is playing and I want her to play instead of being scared and listening to me talk. So have a great night and I'll talk to you soon.